Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, this very special Yahoo Movies uh, exclusive fan event for Jack Reacher. My name's Orlando Parfit. I'm the Yahoo Movies UK editor. How's it going, everyone? A special uh, welcome to all our competition winners. Uh, great to see you all here. And now, I'd like to uh, introduce, first of all, Tom Cruise, some guy called Tom Cruise. Chris McQuarrie and Lee Charles. Back to you. To you. Good to see you. Hi, y'all. How are you? So, guys, thank you, thank you very much uh, for thank coming you. along. Now, first thank of all, um, I'm going to get straight into so basically what I've got is I've got a mixture of questions from our lovely competition winners who are sitting here. Uh, don't they look lovely and excited? Yeah, uh, but I've got, they've, they've all asked very sensible questions uh, that are kind of related to the film, very appropriate. I've got a few just random, totally superficial ones as well. So I've mixed them in so you can look forward to those. But I'm going to start with a question from, it's a, I think it's a very appropriate question, a question from Krista Cords. Uh, hello, Krista. Is that Krista? Hi, Krista. Uh, yeah, and she asked uh, this, I think, maybe to Chris. Let's start with you, Chris. Okay. Um, what made you adapt One Shot, the ninth book in the Jack Reacher series, and not just start with the first book? What were you thinking? <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> thinking. What were you thinking? Uh, it was, we, we thought it was the best way in as an introduction to the character. It's, it's the one book where the story starts before Reacher enters into the story. Uh, so it, it sets you up for the world, and a lot of people are looking for Reacher before he enters the story. And, and it just created a much more mythic entrance for his character. And it, it, it left Reacher not having to tell you about his life, but you could learn about it while, while you were meeting it. How do we find this Reacher? Well, obviously, you don't find this guy unless he wants to be found. Excuse me, sir. There's a Jack Reacher here to see you. The next question from Tim Portis. Now, this is to Lee. With 17 Jack Reacher novels already published, how many would work as films and which one would you like to do next? Uh, well, 17 published, I think uh, the best pick for, for the next movie would be all 17. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is that contractually, you know, worked out already? <laughs> but by next year, there'll be 18 books, so that's immediately increased to 18. It's amazing. So if we do two a year, we'll do nine years of movies we've got. It'd be fun. Is that okay with you, Tom? Two Jack Reacher yeah. films a year? Fun. I love this character and I love his writing. Yeah, you'd, be, you'd be well up for that. I that, think in terms of verbal which one, you know, personally, we've done Jack Reacher's very urban feeling, very gritty, very urban, shot in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So just for variety, the series goes everywhere in America, so for variety we should do a, a rural one. You know, the vast emptiness of America. There's plenty of stories set there and I think the contrast to do it that way we shouldn't typecast the films. We should say, yeah, they can be anywhere doing anything. So maybe different season, different landscape. What do you think sets the character of Jack Reacher apart from other screen detectives? For example, you know, Miss Marple, Morse, etc. <laughs> well, I think Miss Marple is a fairly obvious difference. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, literally the thing that sets him apart is that he has no job and he has no home. Uh, every other screen detective, every other book detective is a soap opera. It's either location-based or employment-based or both. In other words, it's a policeman in L.A. or it's a private eye in Chicago or whatever. And that, as a book writer, worried me because I didn't want to be limited. You know, like I said, 17 books. It'll be 18 books next year. That's 18-page ones That's from a writer's point of view. 18-page ones, if it was a private eye in Chicago, and I had to do that same page one 18 times, I would have hung myself <laughs> by now. But with Reacher, it can be anywhere, and it can, it, it can be doing anything. It can involve the White House or the FBI. It can involve no account little towns full of nobodies. It can be anything. And so the freshness of Reacher is what keeps him alive for me, and that's what makes him different than anybody else. There is literally no other detective that that is homeless and doesn't have a job. He doesn't care about the law. He doesn't care about proof. He only cares about what's right. Out of the car! I was talking to a Spanish journalist the other day and his dad is a big Reacher fan in Spain and I thought this was very smart for a Spanish guy. His nickname for Jack Reacher is Sherlock Homeless. 
<laughs> That's really good. It yeah. is good. That's excellent. Yeah. <laughs> this is from Ryan Crane. Is that Ryan? Hi, Ryan. Hi, Richer always uses baseball players as his code name when he checks into a hotel. If you three had to stay incognito, what would yours be slash be based on? Let's start with you, Tom. Obviously, don't give us your actual thing that you use. <laughs> <laughs> uh, movie characters. Not my own. It's not your own. <laughs> How about you, Chris? Um, food. Food. <laughs> Can you give us an example? <laughs> Burger, uh, you know. <laughs> Mr. Burger. Mr. Yeah, Burger. Just be, yeah, yeah, something food based. It something just, food yeah. based. Yeah, definitely. Is that a bit of an insight into. No, that was just for. Into all of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, into all of us. Yeah. Oh, you're just really hungry. How about you, Lee? Always. Uh, well, uh, you know, like Richard does, I would be uh, baseball players. Uh, yeah, you know, one of the, I think it's in one shot. Yeah, he goes for Yankees second baseman from non championship years. Why'd you say you were a Yankee second baseman? I always use Yankee second baseman. And that's tough to find with the Yankees because they always win the championship. <clears throat> so it's a fairly small uh, pool to pick from, but I would be uh, Jimmy Reese. Yeah, I mean, that, that's my idea of a player. Absolutely. Now, another thing that um, I think a lot of people will really enjoy about Jack Reacher, whether they've read the books or not, is that he's kind of, he's, he's kind of, uh, he's a bit of a wisecracker. He's got, you know, he's got a few quips, hasn't he? Um, and I think that's something that's kind of almost gone out of fashion in recent times, in recent movies. Is Jack Reacher the return of the wise-cracking action star? I think he's got wit. Yeah. And I think he has an intelligence. And the film is so, has, you know, it, it's very funny. Uh, mm. The thing that was great when we put it before an audience, because, of course, we all thought it was funny. Yeah. You know, and then when you see an audience react to that, I mean, there's, you, they're just having a great time in the movie. And that's why, you know, when you read the books, there's stuff that I find myself laughing out loud. And I think that Chris, with his adaptation, his direction, has really uh, brilliantly taken on, you know, and, and understood the character in the world. And also, as a filmmaker, made it his own, his own story, you know, too. And it's, and, but definitely honored uh, the tone and the characters of Lee Child. Yeah. Um, I guess kind of... Uh Link to that in a little way is uh, this question from Dan Perryman. Is there a Dan here? Hi, Dan. Uh, okay. This is Dan's question. It's to all of you. Uh, Born Bond, Liam Neeson from Taken, and Jack Reacher are in a pub fight. Who wins and why? Reacher. <laughs> I mean, come on, get real. Can I, can I take a stab at this, though, really? He, I, I think he would sit back and let all the other people fight. And... Whoever was left exhausted, he would then hit them in the back of the head. <laughs> hit them one punch and kill them. Yeah. yeah. So that's what you. Okay. Well, if that you know, if that fran if those four franchises ever come together, uh, yeah, that could be. Uh, yeah, what a franchise that would be. Moving on from that, have any of you ever been in a real life fight and what happened? <laughs> How much time do you have? <laughs> uh, speaking for myself. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the last one I was in mm. was in a bar, and uh, and I lost. You lost. <laughs> it was five against one. But they're not good odds, are they? That's just not fair. No, it worked for him. Your five friends, <laughs> yeah. you and your four buddies against one guy. You didn't win. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> My four buddies all won. Outrageous. How about yeah. you, Lee? Uh, you know, the last serious fight I was in, I was a student. I was uh, in Sheffield. I was coming out of fish and chip shop. I had my fish and chips in one hand. I had my change in the other hand, and this guy wanted the money. And so I headbutted him. <laughs> and I was telling this to a journalist the other day. He said, why did you headbutt him? And I said, because my hands were full. <laughs> but, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's a long time ago. And, uh, but what I've learned is that it's all about the look. You know, I'm an old guy now. There is no way I would win a fight, but I, I can still do the look. So I'll, I never get into fights. What's the look? Can you do it for it? I can't do it. Spun You've got to threaten me. Threaten me, and I'll give okay. you the look. Yeah. Give, give me your fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to back off before I get hurt. Okay. This is a question uh, from David Chiozza. Hi, David. Where's uh, David? I don't see him. Oh. Hey, David. Um, now, this is to uh, Chris. He yes. asks, Sorry. Uh, is Tom Cruise your muse? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> apparently so. Yeah. He just sort of ended up that way. Uh, Not yes. just smart enough. He's so talented. I'm like, I always just get him in. I'm like, hey, man. 
<laughs> What's and going it, on? Well, but that's that's just it. He's he's very deceptive that way. It never starts as, hey, let's talk about a project. It's, hey, come over for lunch, and then <laughs> and then I'm on a plane to London. <laughs> That's and how it gets you. You don't specify where lunch is. That's exactly no. what happened. That's exactly. We yeah, were at Christmas, it, and next thing you knew, you were in Vancouver. <laughs> exactly. That's right. And and I, I get a phone call saying, "Yeah, you need to be on the plane on Thursday." <laughs> and it, it feels like Tom and I are really just making one long. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, some costume changes, a new car every now and again. Yeah. Yeah. I got work to do. He's got work to do. What are you even doing here? <laughs> When I look at you, I'm like, what is going on? I, I was typing How many on pages my black were you right good? <laughs> we have fun together. Yeah. One epic movie. It's awesome. Um, but, now, this is, um, this is another question uh, to you, Tom. This is from Juice G. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. How do you pronounce your name? Yes, yeah, sure. sure. I got it yeah, so sure. unbelievably wrong. <laughs> yeah, com compare it. By that yeah. <laughs> just, you really, that was. Uh, yeah. I just How are you? pronouncing it. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Um, okay, yeah, and she asks. Um, Getting back to the character of uh, Reacher, how do you, obviously this is an, an adaptation of Lee's kind of like classic character, but how do you put your own spin on it? And do you even want to kind of put your own spin on it? You know, I just want to, you know, I, I, I love the character, so I just wanted him to be happy and, and Chris. And there's, there's stuff that you, that you just instinctually bring, but it's, it's uh, you know, I just felt inspired by the character and inspired by Chris's writing. And then it's really just, you know, in his direction also. And so it was really, you know, wouldn't be here without Lee. And, and then we, we all just, you know, you're just creating something. So it's not, it's not even kind of an analytical, like, I want to do this or spin. There's stuff that just happens creatively where, you know, I start with that story and with that character and I want to honor it. And, uh, and then, you know, certain things just happen as we start to work. You know, we come up with ideas or... He has me approach it in, in a different way, and it was, it's just, I'm always with different characters, you know, you, you can't explain why you make a choice on how to play a character a certain way. I mean, I, you know, I did this character, Les Grossman, and I read it, and I was working with a friend on the script, and I said, look, I'd like to play this character, uh, but I want to have fat hands and I want to dance, you know, and... As you do. Yeah. And that's what you do, but yeah. Reacher, all the clues are there, and you just, you just want, you know, I'm, th I'm always thinking, though, of of the character, the structure, and thinking of the kind of what we like, and also thinking, trying to think of what, just to entertain that audience, and, and, and find things that, that we think are cool, or fun, or interesting, but that are within the world of, of uh, you know, what Lee created. Apparently, you did all your own, you did all your own uh, mm -hmm. stunt car driving. Yeah. Um, how much do you cost to insure? I don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ask. You know what? We don't send the footage to the studio yeah. right away. Yeah, just we wait. so they don't freak out. What, are they, what is it? It's better to beg for forgiveness than, than, ask, permission. than ask permission. Yeah. 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 So no, great, but it was, it was great because, look, we, I, I love car chases. And uh, McCory and I, we, you know, we just share a love of cinema and storytelling. And so we, we spent many years just, uh, you know, watching movies, talking about movies, you know, we've made movies together. When we had the opportunity with this car chase, uh, it, it, you know, we were able to kind of put all of our ideas and, and the things that we've always dreamed of being able to do. Where, you know, the thing that we always talked about is that if the camera isn't in danger, then it's not worth the shot's not worth it. And it was tricky to do because the, the cars themselves they're very old, and we didn't have it set up for. It's hard. I couldn't get the suspension the way it was. It's got a lot of sway. Uh, the car. Uh, steel. Uh, basically, I just had them steel bolt the chair in. And I had a four-point harness under the jacket, and there were nights that we were using ha these kind of rectangular hand warmers to kind of say what we're going to do next. The stuff that's happening in camera when you're doing action, it's, it's, it's like we plan it, we plan it, but you don't know what's going to happen. So there's a real trust factor with all of us that we're not going to uh, get each other into too much trouble. But it was, it was very exciting. To say the least. To say yeah. the least. <laughs> Sounds fairly epic. Um, <laughs> we had so much fun. <laughs> and it was interesting because Rosamond uh, got pregnant when we were shooting. And so we had to finish her by December 1st. And the only way that we could work it out is we decided that we were going to shoot first unit with Rosamond and all her sa scenes during the day. And then Chris and I were going to go off and shoot this, the stunts at night. So there were some days there that we were shooting some of these high-speed impacts where, 
you know, I, we hadn't slept for 36 hours because I would shoot first unit during the day, then at night we would go and do all the, all the car stunts and then go back the next morning to shoot, uh, to shoot with Rosamond again. They finally started making us go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just go home, guys. That's it, say. just go yeah. home. Uh, okay, I've got a question from um, a German reader. I didn't write his name down, but this Pardon is me? to you, Lee. Uh, I've got a question from a German reader. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is to Lee. Uh, I Lee. thought you said a germ reader. A germ reader. Yeah, yeah. Is like, a, I, I don't going, think that's a job, is it? No, no. No, I don't think yeah. so. Um, yeah, this is a question to Lee from a German reader. Um, were you starstruck when you first met Tom? Uh, yeah, no, I have to reveal it. And I've worked in, in a parallel business to this for a long time. I was uh, in television, and when I was 22 years old, almost 23, uh, in my first week, I had lunch with four actors, Laurence Olivier, John Gielgud, Alec Guinness, and Ralph Richardson. And uh, so when, my relationship to actors is, is not really about the name or the status, it's about their ability. And um, I learned very early on that's what counts. And I'm going to embarrass him now because people have talked a lot, is he right for, for the role? And that 36 hour stint that he's talking about, I came in in the middle of that because that was the day I was going to shoot my cameo. I came in the middle, he'd already been working 24 hours. And worse than that, he was injured from, from one of the car wrecks. His left hand was swollen up like a football. Do you remember that? And I, as a friend, I, I, I said, let me see that. And it looked really bad. And as a friend, I would have said, you've got to take a couple of days off and go to the hospital. As a union rep, which was another job of mine once, I'd have said, you've got to take a week off <laughs> and go to the hospital. I said, are you all right with that? And he said, yes, nothing. And to me, that's Reacher. You know, Reacher will do the job or die trying. And uh, that's what he did, you know. And that was an unguarded moment, not in character. That was just him. I said, are you all right? Said, yes, nothing. And, and he works another 12 hours. And so that for me was, uh, you know, that acting, act, actors act, and that's 99% of the job. But if you can get that extra 1% by, as a man, you identify with the character, then that's what makes the difference. And I think that's what we got. You know, it's a great acting job, but he is also the character. You know, that helped. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, in, the, um, in the book Nothing to Lose, Reacher says he hates corruption of traditional spellings. What irrational hatreds do you all have? Or kind of ira what, what, what bugs you? What irrational things bug you? I'll start with you, Lee. Uh, practically everything. Um, <laughs> I'm very easily bugged. Uh, <laughs> it's the question. What bugged you today? <laughs> what bugged me today is uh, me. get to come down here to this... Um, to this room, we came in an elevator and it said, unnecessary force will jam the elevator, but unnecessary was spelled wrong. <laughs> and <laughs> I think if you go, if, I mean, think about it, you go to the trouble of actually doing a sign, uh, obviously you do it on a computer, there's a thing called spell check on a computer, <laughs> why don't you just hit that extra button just once before you print the sign? I can't do better than that. <laughs> no, I don't have a funny one. <laughs> nothing, nothing to bug you guys. Yeah, that's classic with you, I agree. Yeah, you know? just, yeah, stuff spelled wrong. <laughs> yeah, that is annoying. Okay, we're going to have one final question because we're kind of, we're running out of time. Um, but uh, yeah, this is from uh, Chloe in France. This is, I guess, maybe to Lee, but to all of you as well. Where do you see Jack Reacher in five years' time? From who, Chloe? Yeah, in France. Lovely name. Um, where I see Jack Reacher in five years is entirely up to Chloe. Uh, you know, I honestly think, I honestly believe this writing a book is a two-way street. I write it, you read it, then it exists. And so if you keep on reading it, I'll keep on writing them. If you grow bored with them, I'll quit and I'll go live on the beach. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that is all the time we have. But uh, yeah, can you give Thank a big you. hand to uh, Tom Cruise? <laughs> Great. It was nice to see Tom and um, ask our questions. Oh, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It's so great to meet Tom Cruise in person. It's fantastic. I'm very excited to see the film. It's definitely, I really want to see how it pans out, how Tom Cruise is like. Jack Reacher. Thank you, Yahoo. Thank you to Yahoo. Thank you very much, Yahoo, for this fantastic event. Loved it. <laughs> <laughs>